we finally get behind the wheel of the new 2022 Subaru WRX. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Back in September, we had a first look at the new 2022 Subaru WRX. The focus in that video was the new GT trim, which included adjustable dampers and Recaro seats, but it only came with a continuously variable transmission. We didn't get to drive it, but we did get to ride along on some hot laps with pro driver Scott Speed at Thermal Raceway, just to get a taste of this new sports sedan. Well, today we finally get to drive the 2022 WRX. The model we're testing today is a limited with a six-speed manual transmission in World Rally Blue Pearl paint. Unfortunately, due to production delays, we will have to wait a little bit longer before driving the new GT trim with the Performance CVT. The WRX Limited includes an 11.6-inch touchscreen, Harman Kardon sound, 10-way adjustable driver's seat, 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped in Dunlop Summer Performance tires, and the all-weather package, which brings in heated seats and mirrors. We don't know the price yet, but the 2021 WRX Limited went for just over $32,000. This new one is probably in the same ballpark, maybe around $33,000, but that's just a guess. Built on the new Subaru Global platform, the 2022 WRX is larger in all dimensions, making it roomier on the inside without adding any significant weight. It's also more rigid, which benefits handling and comfort. Steering now uses a dual pinion setup for improved feel. Under the hood is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder boxer motor. Here it puts out 271 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. Related to the engines found in the Subaru Ascent and Outback XT, here in the WRX it gets improved valve springs to better cope with high RPMs, an updated bypass valve, and a modified wastegate for quicker throttle response. EPA rates economy at 19 miles to the gallon city and 26 on the highway. Premium fuel is recommended. Obviously, some WRX fans were hoping for more power from this new application of the 2.4 liter turbo four. After all, this is a larger engine, but it only makes three more horses over the outgoing two liter setup. But peak horsepower isn't necessarily the whole story. Our expectation is that the torque curve will provide a lot more power to play with. Two transmissions will be available, either a six-speed manual like we have here, or a performance CVT. All WRXs come with standard all-wheel drive. This particular version of Subaru Symmetrical All-Wheel Drive uses a center viscous coupler that distributes power 50-50 front to back all the time. If you option for a CVT model, you get a more advanced all-wheel drive system that is actually 55% to the back and 45% to the front, using a planetary gear set in the middle. Both all-wheel drive systems are quite capable, whether you're trying to slide into a corner or maintain traction at speed over varying surfaces. Even though the WRX and the Impreza are both four-door sedans, the fact is they don't share any body panels, and even the trunk is a completely different design. Here we have lots of space. We have a fold-down 60-40 split, and under here is a fix-a-flat kit. In the second row is an experience pretty familiar if you've been in the back of a WRX. Uh, we have pretty comfortable seats, actually. I have a center armrest with two cup holders, and down here we have two USB-A sockets. Now, both of those are power only. Headroom, it's okay, but then again, this is a sports sedan. You're not expecting a ton of room in the second row, but I think it's good enough. Now, if you have a family, you definitely can fit a car seat in here pretty easy, and you also have two latch connectors down here. Finally, we get to drive the new WRX. It's powered up. Let's listen. That sounds pretty good. 
Overall, the interior is very familiar to WRX owners. Uh, you still have a very sporty design. Uh, we have faux leather with the stitching. Uh, it's, it actually comes together pretty nicely. Uh, there's nothing here that's going to surprise anybody though. Like nothing, nothing is like bold and big here. This is, this is a very incremental change in terms of design language, especially if you've been into say a Subaru Outback after the 2019 model revision. This is straight out of that car. Yes, it's the big portrait touchscreen. And here you have everything from maps, which actually work pretty good. Let's find the nearest coffee shop. Can I use voice? Please say a command. Find the nearest coffee shop. Please choose a line number or say... Oh, number one. It's funny, I thought either coffee or photocopy. Okay, I found a few results under coffee shop. Great, Please let's see them. Okay, Starbucks, 4.5. There 4. are no 5. more pages left to That's scroll. fine, let's do number Four. one. <laughs> Come on, Nine just one. get me to the Starbucks. coffee shop. Are you ready to start navigating here? Yes. Starting route guidance. Okay, so it actually works pretty well, uh, but it doesn't allow me to interrupt the system, which some systems do allow that. Uh, and it is a little verbose. It talks a little bit more than I really want. When I want to go to coffee shop, I just want to go there. I don't want to have a conversation with my car about it. But the functionality is there. And again, navigation doesn't come on all trim levels, only on the higher trim. So if you get a base trim WRX, for example, you're not going to get nav anyhow. In fact, lower trims don't even get a vertical display. Instead, they get a pair of smaller touchscreens to provide entertainment and configuration options. Let's go ahead uh, and cancel that. And over here, we do, of course, have XM satellite radio. When it comes up, the interface is a little slow. Unfortunately, it's playing Imagine Dragons. Uh, can't have that. Let's go over there. I don't know, pump up the volume. No, I don't need to hear that song anymore. Touch of Great Grateful Dead. Ugh. Okay, anyway. It does have XM satellite radio. Uh, we also have media because, of course, it supports both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And it's kind of interesting. They have not moved to USB-C yet. These are still the old-style USB-A sockets, but they're at least 2.1 amp. So you do get charging on the larger devices. Plug it in. There we go. Now check out CarPlay. Full screen portrait Apple CarPlay, which is the best way to do CarPlay. This is just perfect. It's almost like this is designed for CarPlay. Now, if you have Android Auto, you do not get full screen, and that is not Subaru's fault. Uh, there is an issue with porting, apparently, a portrait display uh, in Android Auto. So, if you have Apple CarPlay, it'll look great. Moving on, we have some more stuff here. You hit the little car button. We have steering responsive headlights. Uh, we also have driving assistance and uh, some other things. If you option the CVT, you get Subaru's EyeSight version 4 safety system. This provides collision mitigation, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control with lane centering, and a lot more. Manual transmission does not get that. We get blind spot warning and rear cross traffic alerts at this trim level. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, car info. We can see driving statistics, I guess, and maintenance. And then, of course, if I go into reverse, I get kind of an old school rear view camera. I kind of wish that actually gave me more information and a higher resolution would be nice. That does look like it's straight off of a car out of like, I don't know, 2005. And it does have rear cross traffic alerts. So those are all good things. We are only driving the manual transmission today. They don't have any CVTs for us to try out, but we did do a preview with the CVT a couple months ago. So you can check out our YouTube channel for that. Here, it's a six speed manual. The feeling, is actually pretty good. It's a little cable-y, which is a typical Subaru trait, but I don't think anybody's gonna be disappointed by this. Gauge cluster, pretty straightforward. We have a tack on the left, we have a speedo on the right. In the center is a very small color multifunction. Uh, we can toggle through some various data points, but again, nothing terribly exciting. What is exciting about this vehicle if it's not the gauge cluster and the infotainment? Of course, it's, it's how it drives. This is a WRX. It's about driving performance. And they've done a number of things to improve that in this model. So let's stop talking and let's take it for a drive in Northern California. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's 
try a zero to 60 on this kind of level road. Line it up. We're gonna be going up a slight incline, so let's see how this goes. Three, two, one, and go. Okay, good launch, 6,000. And 60 at 6.16 seconds. Now, keep in mind there was a slight incline on the second half of that, but I think we could definitely get into the fives. Definitely. Very good performance for a vehicle that is expected to really not cost over 30 grand. At least starting price. There is a lot that is all new in this vehicle. Everything from the chassis to the suspension setup, uh, even the engine has had some significant tweaks. All in the goal of making this a more perfect sports sedan without adding to the price too much. Now, unfortunately, we don't actually know what the price is going to be. They haven't announced pricing yet. They probably won't until about January but I'm expecting that pricing will be very close to the outgoing model. Uh, this one, the Limited, goes for a little bit more than $32,000 in the 2021 model. So for 2022, I'd expect it to be probably around 33. So in terms of interior, I don't find this big screen to be really too distracting. I don't love it though, um, but it does look better than the twin screen setup on the base model. That thing, that's pretty hideous. Uh, so if you do want to get one of these, I would recommend looking at least at a mid-range trim that has the better display. Now let's talk about power. This thing only has 271 horsepower, and a lot of people were disappointed in that figure. They were really hoping for something you know, like closer to 300. But given the expected pricing, the power here I think is fine. Though I'm sure others will yell that it must have 400 horsepower, I don't think the buyer of the standard WRX really needs that. Young families, people who want a commuter, but a vehicle that is also very fun. And is the WRX fun? Yes, it is. That said, I do hope that the upcoming WRX STI has at least 400 horsepower. This new chassis is ready for it, and as a halo, Subaru should really show the world what's possible in the new STI, at least before we all go electric. Will there be an STI? Of course there will be. Unfortunately, they do not comment about future products, so we don't know exactly when it will be out, but it will be out. And you can bet it'll be available in World Rally Blue like this one here. You might notice from the video footage that the suspension appears to be on the stiff side. It is. And that's something you'll want to consider if you're sensitive to getting jostled about. If you still want a WRX, but with a softer factory setup, you might actually consider the GT with its adaptive suspension. Though granted, that is CVT only. Even though this limited trim doesn't have adaptive dampers, it does at least have one more trick that should interest enthusiasts. If you hit traction control, the first toggle is track, and then if you hold it down, it'll actually completely eliminate traction control. Yeah, it's completely off. And no, most vehicles do not do that anymore. <laughs> so you now have even more settings to play with this vehicle, you know, depending on your level of experience and expertise. So in terms of handling, this really is a well put together package. It's been massaged and improved year after year to the point where this is about as good as the WRX can get in this current format. Throttle in, understeer is pretty well controlled. You can really whip it around the corners without feeling like you're really risking all that much. Throttle in, push it. There is understeer if you go in a little hot, but of course there is. But you know, I think that for somebody looking for an exhilarating drive, this is a fantastic option. Changes to the turbo setup and the chassis really make for an improved driving experience. It's very much like WRX's of the past in all the good ways. Uh, it's comfortable, it's quick, it's fun to drive, and I really recommend it. Now, would you get this or would you get like a, I don't know, a Civic Si? Civic Si is a very different beast because of course it is front wheel drive. This being all wheel drive makes it unique in the space. 
So we do look forward to testing this again later in the year on our normal roads. But for right now, I'm really impressed with this first look at the new 2022 Subaru WRX. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos with your friends. We make them for you and we hope you enjoy them.